So I was able to take the chassis and roll it off the lift and roll the body up onto the lift so that I could work on making sure I get rest off of the bottom of it. Um, one thing I did, a dolly has casters, and I put these two rails here that are higher than the lift so that as I pulled it on, I didn't have to worry about the casters coming off of the lift, and that would have created a big problem. So I just have those clamped on with a couple clamps, and I lowered the lift down, not all the way, but just to where it was just about to touch the clamps on the ground. And what I did, and I'm sure most people won't have this option, but I have this backhoe. I took it out, opened the back door of the shop, attached straps to my cart, two, one on each side, and my my thought process was that if it was starting to go one direction or the other, I could rotate the backhoe left or right to put more pressure on the side that I needed to bring it in closer. Uh, so as it turned out, the front wheels came on perfectly straight. I didn't have to do any adjusting with the backhoe. I did get out get off and walk around to the back and line them up with the ramps and then just pulled it on. Uh, I spent about three and a half hours doing that but that included moving the tractor, the lawnmower, getting the uh, chassis off of the lift, pulling the body which was over in this corner where the bot where the tractor is over and lining it up, setting up the straps, setting up the guides, putting the jack stands underneath the front end when I got it on, oh, and all that. So three and a half hours with one guy moving an 800 pound body. Uh, not, not too bad. Um, so what I'm planning on doing now is uh, I'm planning on taking the rest off of any of the bottom and I need to be on the other side of the car because that's where I left my light and things. I've been at this a little over an hour and I've made good progress. Uh, but there's a couple things I wanted to point out that I did, number one. and maybe a suggestion of what I should have done. Number two, uh, when I lowered the lift with these clamps holding the my guides on, as you can see, there's a clamp right there. clamp over there on the other side. I used different kinds because that's what I had. But what I had done is I put a couple of two bys and you can use two by anything. But I put them under where the lip of the ramp on the lift would hit them. So that I had an inch and a half that this ramp was not going to go down and crush those uh, clamps that were holding the guides on. So that was a good idea that I had failed to mention before. But the one I've come up with while I'm trying to get the rust off of the channels and such is that I only made these uprights that go to where the body mounts are on the car about a little over a foot I guess and probably only about six inches above the frame of the dolly 
And had I thought about it earlier, if I would have made the side ones long like that, and then the back ones even longer, this body would have sat well up from where it is now, and that would have given me more room to get my uh, grinder with the wire wheel on it, my drill with a wire wheel on it, and even my paintbrush to put the uh, metal prep or whatever is the phosphorus acid etching solution that I'm using. It would have made it easier if I had multiple or higher rather uh, uprights on that chassis dolly. Uh, now if that makes you uncomfortable because it might be a little bit more wobbly and such, you can always brace them and then take the braces off just temporarily like I've been doing to put the solution underneath where those supports are. I've taken them off one at a time and then rebolted them. Uh, to make it easier to get to, or even possible to get to the part where the body is sitting on those uprights. So I would recommend that if you're making a dolly for a body, make it higher, Get give yourself some room between the frame of the dolly and the bottom of the car.